everybody, my name is Tiffany, and we're so glad that you joined us at church today. And I'm Taylor, and we have a lot of fun planned for you today as we continue to learn about the Holy Spirit. If you weren't with us last week, we kicked off a new series all about a helper named the Holy Spirit that Jesus sent to his followers. The Holy Spirit is our guide, and we are going to learn about ways that we can look to the Holy Spirit to lead us. We also talked about how the Holy Spirit is God. Yep. God is God, Jesus is God, and the Holy Spirit is God. And that can be a bit confusing because we know that there's only one God, right? Yeah, well, that's kind of where you lose me. And I'm not super great at math, but last time I checked, one plus one plus one is three. So that would mean that there's three gods, right? Well, I can definitely see how that might confuse you. Um, but like we said last week, it's this idea that God is one God, but he represents himself in three different people. Okay, but we can trust God because he is who he says he is, right? Yeah, he sure is, Taylor. So I have a question. Are you any better at multiplication? Not really. Me either, but let's do an equation together. What is one times one times one equal? Um, well, that's an easy one. It's one. Yeah, so instead of thinking of God as one plus one plus one equals three, think about God as one times one times one equals one. Wow, that really is helpful. Thank you for sharing that. Well, this week, we're going to learn more about how the Holy Spirit works in our lives. I can't wait. Let's watch this video together and see what happens in our true story from the Bible. is not about Jesus rising up into the sky? I didn't think so. That seems pretty hard to believe. Oh, it happened. It's just not the only amazing thing to happen in this story. What's the story about? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. After Jesus died and came back to life, which is amazing. He gathered his disciples together like he was their coach and they were his team, right? Then he told them he was gonna go to heaven and when he did, they would have an important job to do on earth. And Whoa, we're not there yet. Sorry. First, he told them their job was to tell everyone his story, which was all the things he had said and done on earth, and that he had died and came back to life for us. God wins. How could they possibly share that with everyone in the world? They could do it with help from the Holy Spirit, which is just who Jesus promised them. Then he rose up into the clouds and disappeared into heaven. Awesome! The disciples went to wait in Jerusalem for the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. But there's more to the story. The whole team was together celebrating Pentecost. Wait, how much does the Pentecost? Uh, Pentecost is a holiday. People would come from all over to celebrate the first crops to pop up during harvest season. The disciples were gathered together in an upstairs room, when suddenly there was a great sound, like that of a magnificent gust of wind blowing in. Really? Whoosh! Then something like a flame rested above each of their heads. Yes! At that moment, the Holy Spirit filled each of them, just as Jesus had promised. They felt courageous, confident, unstoppable, they went outside and started sharing Jesus' amazing story with everyone. Oh, so everyone visiting spoke the same language? Uh, everyone did not speak the same language as the disciples, but because of the Holy Spirit, the disciples were able to tell about Jesus in different languages. And the people hearing his story were amazed. You were right, this whole story is awesome. Awesome. Then one of the disciples named Peter stepped up and started giving the crowd a pep talk. He told them that they were able to talk about Jesus in so many different languages because of the Holy Spirit. And he told them, long ago, God gave a message about the Holy Spirit who would one day come to you. What were the people supposed to do? They asked Peter the same question and he told them they needed to ask God for forgiveness for all the wrong things that they did and then be baptized. Getting baptized is not a bath. 
but it does symbolize God cleaning your heart from sin. After he told the people to ask for forgiveness and to be baptized, they became followers of Jesus, just like Peter and the other disciples. Then they would receive the Holy Spirit too. What did the people do? Well, 3,000 of them did what he said and decided to follow Jesus' ways. What? I'd call that a win. I love that God chose the holiday that celebrated the first crops to share the Holy Spirit with his first disciples. The Holy Spirit was a helper to the first disciples and he's a helper for us now. The Holy Spirit empowers us to share God's story. That means he makes us courageous, confident, and unstoppable too. Just like the first disciples. What an unbelievable truth that the Holy Spirit comes and lives inside of each of us when we say yes to following Jesus. Saying yes to Jesus is the most important life-changing decision you will ever make. If you have never said yes to Jesus before, we want to tell you more about him and invite you to do that. Watch this. Hey guys, I'm Taylor, and I wanted to share something so important and amazing with you, and that is Jesus. But first, let's back up to a long time ago, back when God created everything. And when I say everything, I mean like all the plants, all the animals, and literally everything you see. He even created the first two humans, and they were named Adam and Eve. God had this amazing plan to make this perfect and beautiful world and to fill it with his creation. He made Adam and Eve in his image, and it was perfect, and they were so connected to God. God put them in charge of this beautiful place and gave them only one rule to follow. But then something bad happened. They broke that one and only rule, and when they did, sin entered the world. But you're probably thinking, what is sin? Well, sin is doing something even though you weren't supposed to do it, and it separates us from God, just like Adam and Eve. So let me ask you this. Raise your hand if you've ever taken something without asking. I know I have. It could have been something of your friends, your families, or anyone else, but you didn't ask for permission first, so you got in trouble. Since we have all sinned and fallen short of God's plan for us, we are so disconnected from God. God planned for the world to be perfect, and we broke it. But God had a bigger plan from the very beginning, a plan to save us and to reconnect us to Him. And that plan was Jesus. Jesus is God's Son, sent to earth. He lived a perfect and sinless life, a life that we couldn't live but he sacrificed himself for us and took on our sin so that we could be reconnected to God again. One of my favorite verses in the Bible talks about this. It comes from John 3:16, which says, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him will not die, but will have eternal life. Wow. God loves us so much that he gave his only son, Jesus, who was born on this earth and grew up living a perfect life. He never sinned, but he paid the price for our sins by dying on the cross and then three days later rose from the grave, proving that he was even more powerful than sin and death. Now we get to choose to believe this to be true, and when we do, we get to say yes to Jesus. And if you believe these things, I want to invite you to say yes to Jesus today. So I'm gonna pray, and if you wanna say yes to Jesus for the very first time, you can pray this prayer in your head or even out loud. Jesus, thank you so much for forgiving us. I know that I sin all the time and that I just wanna thank you for paying the price for our sins that I don't have to because you died on the cross for me. Thank you so much for loving us and I really want you to be the leader of my life and I wanna follow you every single day, forever. God, thank you so much for loving us. We love you, amen.
Now, if you prayed that prayer with me, congratulations. I am beyond excited for you to be following Jesus. Welcome to the family of God. If you would like to say yes to Jesus today, I invite you to say this prayer silently to yourself while I say it out loud. God, I know that I am a sinner in need of a savior. I know that my sins separate me from you and that the only way to get back to a good relationship, a right relationship with you is through Jesus. I believe that he is that way. And God, all I have to do is confess it with my mouth that I believe that and I am saved from my sins. So thank you for sending him and loving us so much. We love you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. And if that was you and you made that decision, welcome to the family of God. We are so glad that you made the decision to follow Jesus. So as you go into your small groups today, think about this bottom line. The Holy Spirit lives within me. Would you say that with us? The Holy Spirit lives within me. Well, thanks so much for being with us today. We hope you have a great week. See you next time. Bye. Bye.